Medistand. Understanding Medicine. I am Professor Azizur Rahman and today I am going to present this third part of my uh, series of lectures on acute metabolic complications of diabetes. And first we discuss pathophysiology of uh, these metabolic comas and I uh, explain in detail the basic abnormalities, what happens and how they happen. And in the second lecture we discussed the management of diabetic ketoacidosis. Now it is very strongly recommended that if you have not watched those videos, uh, I, I suggest that you should go back and watch those videos because without them this would look incomplete. Because I assume that you have already watched those videos so I am going to just discuss those things which were not covered in those two lectures. Today we are going to uh, uh, the focus on hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state. This is also one of the complications of uh, diabetes. Let me uh, explain some terminology. Uh, hyper or smaller, this is the currently used term hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state. Hyper or smaller, obviously, it means there is hyperosmolality. Hyperglycemia, uh, that also self-explanatory. State means that patient may be in any state. Patient may not be comatose, patient may not be stuprose. Any, any condition where there is hyperosmolality due to hyperglycemia. So that is referred to as HHS. Previously it used to be called hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic state. Because just to differentiate it from DKA where there is ketosis so this word was added but currently we consider that this addition of non-ketotic state is unnecessary just saying hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state is good enough and before that it used to be called hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic coma now uh, in fact coma is very very rare most patients would have some altered state of consciousness and that also in DKA mostly not in this so that is why this now I will be uh, discussing some important features but uh, I think we will not be able to discuss detail because everything uh, we will be actually uh, comparing with DKA so in reference to DKA some of the differences I will be highlighting more often in type 2 diabetes you know dka is typically in seen in type 1 very occasionally in type 2 but hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state is more common in type 2 diabetes and it progresses very slowly and because it, it happens when there is something which restricts water intake patient is uh, has lost the thirst mechanism or patient was confined in some some space or due to some reason water was not available so that is the most common precipitating factor there is severe hyperglycemia more severe than you see in dka typically patient would have 600 plus milligram per deciliter of glucose in their blood and because of severe hyperglycemia there is severe hyperosmolality normally our osmolality is like 275 to 295 or around that figure now in these patients because of massive hyperglycemia there is much increased osmolality and it may be more than 320 milliosmoles per kg and then severe dehydration because of more hyperglycemia more osmotic diuresis there will be more dehydration also because there is no ketosis since there is no ketosis then the presentation is slightly delayed and delayed presentation uh, allows more fluid to be lost so patient has more severe dehydration in hyperosmolar uh, hyperglycemic state as compared to DKA uh, there are more thrombotic complications 
because of again more dehydration and older age of the patient the thrombotic complications in the form of d vein thrombosis or some other uh, venous thrombosis they are commoner in hss as compared to dka mortality i think this is very interesting many would think that dka being more complex disease because there is uh, ketosis one would think that mortality in uh, dka is more but the actual reality is that mortality in hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state is 10 times more but this increased mortality is because of the associated conditions we have already mentioned that this condition is a complication of type 2 diabetes and type 2 diabetes occurs in a relatively older patient as compared to type 1 diabetes and there is more likelihood that there would be some cardiovascular uh, disease which would complicate the picture so mortality is 10 times more in uh, hss as compared to dka uh, there is usually no frank acidosis. In fact, by definition, the pH should be more than 7.3. And bicarb should be more than 15 milli equivalents per liter. Now, more than 15 may still be acidotic. And more than 7.3 may still be a little acidotic. But this much acidosis is acceptable part of hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. More frank acidosis would qualify the label of DKA. Now, of course, patients with DKA have the, comp have the component of hyperosmolality, and patients with the hyperosmolar state also may have a little bit of acidosis, this overlap. So we have to uh, see which one, which component is predominant. There is no or minimal ketonemia or ketonuria uh, because the mechanism is different type 2 diabetes patient they still have some insulin in their system and even small amount of insulin will prevent ketosis and but it will not be able to prevent hyperglycemia so since small amount of insulin is present in these patients so typically ketosis is not there treatment principles are the same because in DKA and uh, HSS, uh, HSS, yes, in both you replace insulin, you replace fluids, you replace potassium, and bicarb is really not needed. So the principle of the management is the same. That is why I was, uh, uh, I was suggesting that you should go back and watch other videos which have discussed the management of DKA in detail and the same principle would apply here then there's a condition called diabetic lactic acidosis lactic acidosis is a, a serious form of uh, metabolic acidosis it it has got actually many other causes of, of course i'm not going to address those i'm just going to focus on that type of lactic acidosis which occurs in diabetes due to diabetes uh, I think it develops typically in those patients who have type 2 diabetes with CKD and they were being treated with metformin. So I think if one could avoid using metformin in those who have CKD, this complication would be prevented. Uh, there is severe metabolic acidosis with wide anion gap but this time the cause of this widening of uh, anion gap is not uh, ketone bodies in this case it is the lactate the lactic acid is causing widening of the gap otherwise the picture would be same there will be reduced ph there will be reduced bicarb and uh, the anion gap will be widened Lactate levels should be measured and uh, if you can measure lactate levels, you will see that they are high and ketones will be normal or only borderline high. Bicarb, same recommendation as DKA because once you correct the abnormality, you are going to reverse acidosis. 
but generally in lactic acidosis because the acidosis is usually more severe and usually more bicarb is used in these patients but ultimately we will monitor the pH once pH is brought back to the safe level then we will stop giving bicarb and we will try to reverse the basic uh, problem that is insulin deficiency and the fluid deficiency and potassium deficiency and that will actually reverse the acidosis process. Treatment principles are the same with some differences. Now this is the chart which is like a summary uh, of comparing three different types of acidosis you we see in diabetes. DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic state and diabetic lactic acidosis and we will compare these three conditions as per these parameters. Now first the background. DKA typically occurs in type 1 diabetes. We have mentioned that it can occur in type 2 also occasionally but typically it is a complication of type 1 diabetes and HHS is typically the complication of type 2 diabetes and this lactic acidosis typically develops as type 2 diabetes with CKD and those who are taking metformin. So the background is slightly different from the background one can guess which type of acidosis you are going to see. Then glucose in HHS glucose is typically very high 600 or plus but in other two is high of course it would be 300 350 and I explained to you in my first lecture that there is a condition called euglycemic DKA. Uh, in these patients glucose may be normal or at least not as high as we normally expect like somebody having glucose of 200, 200 having 200 glucose is just normal in patients with type 2 diabetes but with 200 glucose they may have DKA. So glucose will be very high in HHS but moderately high in uh, these two conditions DKA and DLA. Osmolality again because osmolality is because of hyperglycemia so osmolality is very high in HHS as compared to other two types of comas where it is moderately high. pH, bicarb and base success because these three parameters they indicate acidosis and in hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state usually there is no acidosis so these things would be normal or only slightly deviant. But in DKA of course they will be low indicating acidosis and in lactic acidosis also they will be low indicating acidosis. Uh, dehydration all three groups will be dehydrated but patient with HHS they are likely to have most severe dehydration average fluid deficiency in this condition is 9 liters whereas in this is about 6 liters 6 or 7 this one again 6 or 7 liters. The anion anions present in HHS, no anions are accumulated because there is no acidosis. In DKA, it is uh, ketone bodies which make the anion gap white and in diabetic lactic acidosis, it is the accumulation of lactate which makes the anion gap white. And finally, the mortality if treated uh, in diabetic ketoacidosis, the mortality is 1% or less. So this is has, this DKA has the best prognosis. In HHS the mortality may be 10% and this is because of concomitant conditions heart and brain and kidney conditions. And then again lactic acidosis because it's a serious condition again the mortality could be up to 10%. So there are three serious condition but out of the three DKA has the best prognosis. Perhaps because it occurs in the young, relatively young people. So summary, in-depth understanding of pathophysiology of hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state is needed to properly manage this condition. 
treat hyperglycemia and dehydration according to the evidence-based guidelines. We need much more fluid and insulin in HHS as compared to DKA. And a properly maintained flow sheet is crucial and very, very helpful to detect and treat complication. And only following a flow sheet, you will uh, know that the things are going in the right direction. And an underlying cause must be looked for because uh, there could be a, an underlying cause which has caused this HHS or HHS might have resulted in some complication. So I think once patient recovers, we must have another review if there is anything which we had missed. HHS has 10 times more mortality due to old age and comorbidities. And DLA is mostly iatrogenic because it is preventable if you do not use metformin in patient with type 2 diabetes with CKD. With that, I like to thank you for watching the three videos on acute metabolic complication. Uh, those who did not uh, watch the earlier two videos, they should also uh, watch those videos to complete this module of uh, diabetic complication. Thank you very much. This was Professor Aziz Rahman from Medistand.